or if you've been in a, before a court of law and you're found guilty under the charter, under the constitution, you're entitled to request an appeal pending, bail pending an appeal, okay? So you get out. And then your lawyers make an argument that the court of appeal, that the judge got it wrong. Got it? And so there are, there are essentially two principles you have to satisfy. One is that you have a meritorious appeal. You can't just say, I've got an appeal, and you have to show that that really is a worthwhile argument. That's the first thing. Well, we killed that. We killed it. First of all, we showed case law from previous detainees who, are, who have been in the federal court where similar charges to Omar and the federal, and the federal court of the United States has ruled that their, 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 their convictions in Guantanamo would not recognize law of war charges. One. And then we had um, four experts, US military experts, um, well renowned in the field, right? Uh, affidavits in support of Omar's strength of his appeal. One of them said at the end in his conclusion that the only international crime that took place was the crime of the trial involving Omar Khadr. And so we killed that. Then the second one is a bit more different. You have to show that you uh, safe to put uh, the public interest is satisfied, okay? And so, if I'm representing someone who's committed fraud, he poses no real danger to the to society. But if I represent, represent somebody who's a killer, the court is going to be very reluctant to allow him to be released. And so we showed, we provided all those documents that we had early provided victims, plus more over the, over his throughout his detention in Canada. But that was the first part. And then we provide the letters from all walks of life of people in Alberta who were prepared to take him and help him readjust. Okay? So a strong case. The federal crown did not challenge the fact that he didn't have a meritorious case. And the Federal Crown did not challenge, contrary to what Harper keeps saying to us every day, that he posed a danger to Canada. They made no argument. They conceded that. And so Omar got out. And of course, as soon as he got <coughs> out, within days, um, well, within an hour, our government then said we're going to appeal to Mr. Blaney. So they obviously took they asked me very bright, or it took no time to consider what the judge said. <clears throat> and then they brought an emergency application before the Court of Appeal, asking for a stay of that judge's ruling. Meaning we want, that we want to keep him inside. And I know why they want to keep him inside. It's the same reason why they have not allowed Omar to be interviewed by anybody until he got out. Because they want you to understand that he is evil. He's the worst of the worst, just like Dick Cheney said. Those Muslims in Guantanamo, oh God, just leave them there, just, just leave us alone. We know what's best for you. In part of fact, Cheney said, go shopping mm -hmm. yeah. to the American public. The last thing they want you to see is who you saw. You know, and so we, the, so the whole purpose was delay, and then we had that stay proceeding, and the judge released him. So didn't uphold the stay, the appeal is still on, but he's out. And so that's that long, long journey tale that I mean, you could write books about, that I've tried to encapsulate. I just let it come out of me, because there's, there's so many different ways I could tell a story about, about Omar Khadr. But I'd like to finish by saying when I start to touch upon is about justice. I've come to uh, I've, I've come to talk about human rights pretty late in the game. You know, I I never thought of myself as any human rights lawyer, and I certainly 
don't think of myself as a pro bono lawyer, which I am. <laughs> in fact, in fact, years ago, I was given a pro bono award by 200 lawyers from, and by all the, as Louise mentioned, by all the law societies of Canada. And in speaking to this host of about 200 lawyers in Vancouver, I said, there's not such a word in the, in the Scottish dictionary called pro bono. <laughs>